Hello and welcome to the GMAC Club MBA Spotlight Fair featuring top business schools from across the globe. My name is Selby and I'm a GMAC Club moderator. Today, I am delighted to be hosting HEC Paris here to give us a great insight on what the MBA program is like at HEC. We've got Allison, Lisbid, Ginica, and Swati, who will be taking us through the presentation, after which we'll be going through a Q&A. This Q&A will happen later on Zoom, so make sure to join right after the session. We will be offering some prizes for you for attending the session. The prize drawing will be done at the end. So if you want to enter the prize drawing, the link to it will be uploaded on the chat box. And also, guys, feel free to ask any questions in between. We will try to reply to them in the chat itself. Last but not least, give us a like and subscribe to our channel. It'll only take a minute of your time. Thanks, guys, and I'll turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. My name is Lisbeth, and I am a marketing and recruitment manager at HEC Paris. I'm really delighted to be here with you today. Um, so I'm, I'm also joined by my colleague, Alison Brown, who's also a marketing and recruitment manager. And we're part of a team of four marketing and recruitment managers dedicated to candidates across the globe who are interested in pursuing our MBA program. We are also delighted to be joined by two of our wonderful current students, um, Ganika and Swati, but I will let them introduce themselves. So maybe Ganika, we can start with you and just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and a little bit about your career pre-MBA. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, my name is Ganika Okafo Bamuro. I'm Nigerian and prior to my MBA, I own my own footwear company called Yidi Footwear, which I run for um, currently now for six years. So basically what we do is we work with local artisans to craft um, leather footwear. Um, that's what I did before joining the HEC MBA. Great, thank you. And how about you, Swati? Um, thanks, Alison. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Swati Hasija. Uh, I am Indian, and uh, before joining HEC Paris, I was uh, a technology consultant with Accenture. I have around seven years of global work experience. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So now we'll move on. Um, we'll go over a brief presentation of HEC Paris in our MBA program. Uh, so HEC is one of the oldest business schools in France, uh, and there are over 4,000 students enrolled each year pursuing different programs, including our renowned Masters in Business, PhDs, and of course the MBA, which we're talking about today. So we know that rankings are an important factor when deciding which MBA program is right for you. Um, AGC is consistently ranked in the top 10 across all rankings, but I strongly encourage you to take a look at the criteria of each ranking and decide what is mo most important to you and go by that. I'll turn it over to Lisbeth, who's gonna tell you a little bit about what our class looks like. Yes, um, so I'm happy to tell you a bit more about the program. Um, our program is 16 months in duration and it's a full-time program. You can start in September or in January. And our students um, are coming from across the globe. It's HEC has a very unique program because we're considered to be a mid-sized MBA, small enough to really build your network from the ground up within with your peers in the classroom, but also big enough um, to, to have access to this large international network. Um, our students on average have six years of work experience, but the minimum requirement is two years. And our students are on average 30 years of age. But again, this range is between 25 to about 36 years of age. Our students are coming from across the globe. Um, so in addition, but in addition to this cultural and geographic diversity, our students are also coming from across um, professional backgrounds. This is one of the things that, that really makes HEC so unique and that we feel that um, we feel that this diversity is really one of the strengths of our program. Ginika or Swati, maybe you want to share a bit more about why you chose um, HEC Paris. Ginika, you've alluded to it since you didn't refer too much to, to rankings, but um, Swati, what, what was the particular point that made you choose H the HEC Paris MBA program? Okay, uh, so for me, uh, when I understood about the program, I lot, a lot, uh, read a lot of blogs, I went to the website, I saw videos. I was almost convinced by that stuff. Uh, but I also spoke to a couple of students at HEC and what I understood uh, from them was HEC is a very unique school 
and which I have also experienced over the past 11 months over here, that uh, here it's not just about your achievements, what you have on paper. It is also about the kind of passion or dreams you carry in your life and the value system you have, what kind of person you are. Academics is a very important part of it. But apart from that, I think we are learning a lot of life skills uh, hanging out with each other at HEC. Absolutely. Thank you. So thank you so much for sharing that. And as well, um, of course, HEC is very invested in supporting more women in business. So our current class, um, there are 35% uh, women, but we're always looking to increase that number. And we're very proud to have two wonderful, talented women such as Ginika and Swati in our program. Great. So speaking about hanging around on campus, um, if you're wondering what our campus looks like and what it's all about, um, our campus is located 17 kilometers from Paris, but it's very accessible. It's about 45 minutes from the center of Paris. Personally, uh, Lisbeth and I both live in Paris and we commute using the shuttle. It's a private shuttle that'll take you from Paris. Um, it's located in an area called paris Saclay, and this is a really big hub for higher education and high-tech businesses, research centers, of startups. And the HEC students have access to these resources as well. You'll have researchers or business professionals coming to campus to share their projects with you. Um, and we're also a member of Station F or Station F. Um, it's a, one of the world's largest startup hubs and it offers vast opportunities for HEC students interested in tech and startups in general. And then on the next slide, we'll give you an idea of what the campus looks like. Um, you can see one of the most popular hangout spots, which is the lake. Um, on the top right, you'll see the S building, which is where most of the MBA classes are held. Um, and then on the top left, you'll see our chateau where MBA students are invited for welcome dinners or other special events. Um, but it's probably best to hear from our students. Um, you know, do you live on campus? Uh, how did you make the choice whether to live on campus or to live in Paris? And what is campus life like? Okay, I think I'll take this one. Um, I shuttle between campus and living in Paris. So I have an apartment in Paris, but I also have a room on campus. With me, I decided I wanted to live on campus because I wanted to experience student life and I wanted to be close to classes. I wanted to make sure that if I needed to access any of the classes, in the evening, I can go as opposed to like having to travel from Paris, which isn't a great distance. But I just wanted to be close to the school um, community. I know how important being on campus is. Um, I went to an undergrad school that the campus was scattered around the city. And I didn't feel like I, I got the whole um, university experience. So when I was applying to RCC, that was something that was very important to me. I knew that it was a campus-based university, and I wanted to make sure that I maximize everything, living on campus, interacting with students, going for like the student events, and just being close to um, the teachers and all the amenities that is provided for us by the university. So that was why I decided to stay on campus. And then during the weekends, I go back to Paris. Great, thank you. Um, we might move on to the next slide for time, but we'll ask you more about clubs in a later slide. That's right, Alison, thanks. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the program is 16 months in duration and you can start in September or in January. On this slide, you'll see the September intake illustrated. The next slide will um, talk a bit about the January intake because Ginika and Swati are both in the January intake. Um, but just to give you an indication, the 16 month duration program is actually split into two phases. You have what we call um, first the fundamental phase, which include terms one and two. You'll have your series of core courses, which everyone takes when they join our MBA. During these first two terms, the uh, HEC splits you into study groups of about four to six students. And generally in these study groups, you won't have a, a, a peer who has the same professional background nor same nationality as you in your, in your group. Here, is, this is really to foster um, your, your exposure to different ways of thinking. It's important to note that our learning methods is, or our teaching methods is case-based learning. So you'll always learn a bit of theory, but you're always going to be putting it into pieces through workshops, presentations, etc. Then we move on to what we call the customized phase. So here, um, the you are able to customize your MBA experience very much in accordance to what you want to explore and uh, in relation to what some of your post-MBA career objectives may be. In term, in term three, you'll have a, the option to pursue eight electives 
or an MBA project or go on an international exchange. We actually have over 40 exchange partners uh, worldwide with other partnered institu uh, higher education institutions. So this is an opportunity you'll have in either term three or four. Um, otherwise, you can choose to pursue the MBA project, which is exploring a strategic business problem um, during this term. Um, and then in term four, you will be able to pursue one of seven specializations or again, do the international exchange if you really wanted to do one and didn't have that opportunity in three or alternately chose to, to, do, to pursue the electives. I'll move on to the January intake so that you can see the slight difference um, between the two intakes. Here you'll see the difference is more in terms of a calendar difference. You'll see terms three and four are inverted. Um, the value of each intake is no different. So it's really up to you and your own personal timeline. Currently, um, all our students are pursuing the specialization. So it, both intakes, um, September and January, will be graduating at the same time, and they pursue the specialization term at the, at the same time as well. So uh, if you're a January intake student, you get to then network within the classroom with your peers from the September intake depending on the specialization uh, you chose. Specializations generally run, are always run from September until December. For January intake students, they will then have one remaining term over, which is term four. Again, during that term, you can choose between eight electives, the MBA project, or an international exchange. So this is an opportunity for all students. It's not mandatory, of course, but this is certainly an option available. And during uh, your MBA, of course, uh, there's a big focus on leadership development. So I'll um, move on to the next slide. So uh, Alison can tell you a bit more about some of our leadership activities embedded into the program. Sure. Thanks, Lisbeth. Um, so you're really going to be challenged not only in the classroom, but outside of the classroom as well. Um, and the goal of these sort of leadership opportunities is to really give you hands on experiences, hands on challenges, things that you might not be getting in the classroom or even in your career. Um, so one of the more fun events is the MBAT, which is like the MBA Olympics. Um, there are about 1,500 MBA students who come from around the world. Um, it's a really fun and cool event, but the real benefit is that it's actually 100% student run. So the HEC MBA students are responsible for financing and budgeting. It's a 500,000 euro budget. Um, they're responsible for marketing execution, logistics, um, really everything from A to Z. Uh, and it's really an opportunity to build leadership skills while planning and executing a large scale event. Um, you'll also see in the photo here on the slide, this is our leadership seminar and students are divided into groups of about 10 and they're paired with a mentor who is there to guide them and give them feedback. The mentors are usually ex-military, so they're coming from a very unique background. Um, and during this time, individuals learn how to lead a group and accomplish a goal by completing a series of tasks that are increasing in difficulty um, as they're doing them. Uh, and the MBA students who do the leadership seminar will tell you that they look easy at first and they are definitely not easy. Um, so Elise, Elise Betts will tell you on the next slide a little bit more about uh, opportunities outside of the classroom with the different clubs and what we have going on in student life. Yes. Um, so during your MBA, of course, uh, in, uh, in addition to the, some of these capstone leadership uh, development events and activities, you can also participate in one of many um, professional networking clubs. So there are 25 of them uh, currently that are dedicated specifically and run by uh, specifically MBA students. Some examples here are the Private Equity and Venture Capital Club, the Africa Club, the Entrepreneurship Club, um, Healthcare Club, uh, Women in Leadership Club, the Retail and Luxury Club. So there's loads of them. Actually, our MBA professional networking clubs are dedicated either to sectors or geographies, but their intent is really for our MBA students to expand their network within these domains and perhaps even gain uh, opportunities for post-MBA or career opportunities as well. So, um, gain leads for that as well. Um, now, Ginika and Swati, are you involved in student clubs? And if so, could you name them? And could you maybe tell us a bit about um, some of key takeaways or some of your favorite uh, activities that have taken place during your participation in, in, in some of these clubs? Okay, um, I guess I'll go first. Okay, so, um, I'm a member of uh, like the like maybe four or five clubs. So the luxury club, the MBA, the African club, um, public speaking, 
and um, I forget. Is there any other club? I think those are the clubs that I'm interested Re in. Retail and luxury, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the, yeah, the luxury <laughs> club. So retail yeah. and luxury club, um, the um, NBA Africa club, and um, public speaking club. Right. I wanted to focus. I wanted to reduce the number of clubs that I'm in because I wanted to play an active role. So. On two of the clubs, I'm an advisor, and one, I'm a VP. And I can tell you that that's one of the things that um, RCC is known for, the retail and luxury club. You'll be exposed to a lot of um, the big masons in France and even across the world. So last week was, or two weeks ago, was the Trek Week. And we visited um, a lot of masons in Paris from Fendi to Chloe to um to Chanel it was it was a lot it was it was a packed week right we interacted with people who worked there and it basically gave us an insider um scope into the way things are done because we're able to interact with people who currently work there and to me for those who are interested in luxury and retail, I think this is a win-win for you because not only do you know about these clubs, you actually interact with these people, right? They they host events and on, on, on campus and off campus. You're able to network and you can actually, and then they let you know about like um, vacancies that they have or internship opportunities. So you're actually closer to like your favorite designer if you actually, if you're part of the retail and luxury club. And then the Africa club, um, of course, gives you a whole lot of advantage. You're able to interact with um, CEOs and even industry big wigs that work um, and I impacting the continent. So um, I thought that was very interesting and I wanted to be part of that. And then the public speaking club is a club that is very dear to my heart because I I did my first um, debate competition sometime this year and I was the best speaker and he helped me literally fostered um and busted my confidence in speaking publicly and by joining this club it literally helps you um it gives you confidence and you're able you know what to, how to speak how to conduct yourself in public and these clubs are very important because you get access to the industry so that's one thing that as you see exposes you to and gives you the privilege um to meet um the people who run some of the top businesses in the world, you know, so, yeah. Thanks for sharing your experiences, Ginka. Um, it's, it's really interesting to see how, how each individual and how each current student leverages these clubs for um, some of their um, objectives and also just areas of exploration, um, curiosity, but also for gaining additional knowledge um, in, in these yeah. Swati, do you want to share about your um, experiences? Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm the president for the consulting practice, and I'm also an advisor for the technology club. The consulting practice uh, is uh, one of its kind. Uh, it's like a small consulting company running inside Ashise, where we are uh, partnering with the consulting companies, mm -hmm. impact organizations, with the other uh, clubs to get real-time part-time projects for students at HEC. These projects are sometimes paid, sometimes pro bono. But uh, these uh, projects are a real chance to, you know, get exposed to the industry. Uh, we have done uh, projects from uh, companies in multiple countries. We just finished a project with a Parisian travel firm. We are right now working with a project uh, with a Zambian company. And uh, we, we are also working with a uh, consultancy in US. So uh, uh, it, it's, a, it's a real platform for people who want to get into consulting or also for people who want to get to know the industry better to try something new, a new company, a new industry to expose themselves to it. And also the technology club uh, is like the other clubs as Kineka also talked about them. We have networking events. Uh, uh, actually, yesterday itself, we went to SAP in Paris uh, for a visit and we got to learn uh, a lot about the company, how it succeeded, their focus areas. So uh, it, it it is also one of the ways to network with individuals uh, in companies in Paris. So uh, I think clubs are a very good platform. Uh, each one of us should be in a club. <laughs> 
Thank you for sharing your experience. And indeed, you'll see some of these posters here um, on this slide. These are some of the, the recent events that have happened, events that have happened in the past. But some months there are up to 30 events happening at, 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 um, in, in a particular month. So you can certainly be busy and be involved in any club that is of interest to you and your professional um, aspiration. We'll move on to the Career Center. Great. Yeah, so um, in addition to the events that the clubs are hosting, you'll also have the benefit of using the Career Center. Uh, from day one, MBA students are paired with a career coach who will help guide you in using the 16 months of the program to best prepare yourself for the industries and companies that you're targeting afterwards. The Career Center has a three-step approach. Know yourself, know the market, and match yourself to the market. And again, they're there to guide you. They're, help, they're there to help you make uh, decisions about doing an MBA program, about your internships, uh, and how to best use your time. And on the next slide, you can see um, all of the different companies that HEC is engaging with. There's over 250 companies that HEC Paris MBA students engage with throughout the year through recruitment and different events. Uh, as you can see on this slide, um, the companies really represent a diverse range of sectors and industries. And then on the next slide, uh, you can see a little bit of our placement stats afterwards. Um, so not only does ATC engage with leading companies in the world, but the ATC MBA program is actually really reputed for its ability to transform careers. 45% of students do what we call the triple jump, and they actually change the sector, function, and location of their career. Now let's talk a bit more about practical things. Um, you're probably wondering in terms of fees and funding. Of course, this information can be found up to date on our website. Um, but current tuition fees, we are currently recruiting for the September 2022 intake and soon we will be recruiting for the January 2023 intake as well. You always have the option to choose between one of two intakes when you are applying. Um, we also offer scholarships, so our main scholarship is through the HEC Paris Excellence Scholarship, and you have the potential to be awarded up to 50% of your tuition. Great. So when you are ready to apply, uh, we have a five-week application process. Um, step one, which you'll see at the bottom here, is connect with us. That's sort of a pre-application uh, step that you can take that I'll talk about in the next slide. Once you have completed your application and submitted it, um, you'll know in a few weeks uh, whether or not you have been pre-selected. So your application goes through a pre-selection jury. If you are pre-selected to move on to the next phase, uh, you will have interviews with two alumni. And then following those interviews, your application will go through to a final admissions jury. And you'll have a response uh, as to whether or not you're admitted to the program within five weeks. The, on the slide that you see here, it's that pre-application step that I spoke about. We encourage you. We want to hear from you. We want to give you personalized feedback. Um, and by filling out this form and submitting this form, you'll not only have feedback, but it just starts your conversation with us um, and helps us take the next step together. So we really look forward to hearing from you. That was a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much for sharing that information with our audience. Uh, we also would like to thank our audience members who have joined today. We hope this session provided you guys with valuable information about HEC. If you still have questions, remember to join the live Q&A session in Zoom. The link is now being posted in the chat, and we hope to see you there. Uh, you can also stay tuned on YouTube for the next Business School presentation. Uh, thank you, Allison, Lisbeth, uh, Gideka, and Swati for your time today, and we will see you in Zoom momentarily.